So for a while now, I've been fermenting my own hot sauces. Uh, seems like an inevitable leap from a home brewer to, you know, making fermented hot sauce, fermenting beer, fermenting peppers. It's pretty much the same process. I love me some spicy food, so it just kind of worked out. So I figure I'm going to start doing a regular section on uh, making hot sauce. So this is going to be the first one. Figure I might as well make it a little uh, interesting to start off with. So we're making habanero beet hot sauce. I think the uh, the spiciness from the beets, the heat from the habanero, and the fruitiness, it's going to tie nicely together. So let's get to it. So the process for making hot sauce, for, you know, is is pretty simple. We're basically just going to make a, a salt brine out of water and kosher salt, uh, three and a half percent. So. Being that I'm a home brewer, I get to use some of my awesome home brewing equipment. So I have a 3000 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask here. And what this is basically gonna do is just help me measure out what percentage of salt I need for this brine. So we've got 3000 milliliters in the Erlenmeyer flask. We're gonna go with 3%, 3.5% of that, which is 101 milliliters of salt. Okay, so, or 105, sorry, not 101. So that's gonna go in and just get this nice and dissolved. Now we're using kosher sea salt here. Uh, I feel like it's the best that you're looking for for salinity ratios. You could use pink Himalayan salt, but it's not quite as salty as this. So you'd have to adjust it. Uh, so I, I just always use kosher salt because I know what it does and, and where it's at. So that looks pretty, pretty nice and mixed up. We'll wait till this clears out to, before we dump it into the uh, the thing here but so what we're going to do is i have a gallon jar that we're going to be using for fermentation and we have about seven beets seven small little beets here so we're going to peel these and get them cut up We have those habaneros. I mean, these things are absolutely beautiful. They're giant, look amazing. The color's great. I'm really excited about the color for this hot sauce because I think the beets are going to be like a bright red, you know, hot sauce. It's going to have some heat to it. Pretty excited. We got about a pound and a half of these. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you you cut these up. Just you don't have to do anything fine, but just chop them up. That way, the brine, like I said, can get inside of everything. If you don't get it inside the uh, peppers here. It, it can rot from the inside out during this process. This is gonna be fermenting for at least a month. Um, so you wanna make sure that everything gets nice and incorporated into that brine. The smell, these, they're so floral, the habanero. I know it's like got a ton of heat, but the fruitiness of it is just incredible. Next up, we got sweet onion is going in here. And we're gonna just peel this. And this will just go on top and kind of help keep the, the uh, habaneros down. You don't want anything floating out of the brine that's in here. Uh, anything that's out of the water or in it, out of the brine can cause bacteria, so that's, important that we keep everything submerged so we got the onion on top Just slice this up and just give everything a good squishing in there i'm actually going to add one more onion here okay so we got everything in here we got our beets our onions our habaneros Everything's in there. Time for the brine. Like I said, we got that three and a half percent water to salt solution is going in. All right, we're just gonna fill that all the way up. So you're gonna see little water ball, little water bubbles coming up as, as all the you know brine, you know kind of leaches into everything and gets into all the little nooks and crannies. 
you can kind of bump it a little bit to kind of help that along. And then as you can see, the onions here are floating to the top. And like I said, we need to keep everything under that. So I have these little fermentation weights and get them on Amazon. And that's just going to keep everything underneath the water line. A couple of these little pieces are going to pop out. We're going to throw a couple of them in. I'm going to spill a little bit here, but that's all right. All right, everything's filled up. Now, the way that we uh, keep this sanitized here is we're going to have an airlock, which basically allows the gas, because this is going to ferment and create a lot of gas from the bacteria that are getting into the sugars, and, and they turn that into carbon dioxide. So you have this. It allows the gas to escape, but nothing to get in, so none of the microbes could get in. Now, being also a home brewer, this isn't really necessary as long as you keep everything washed with hot water and, and nice and clean. I just prefer to go the extra step. I have some star sand here, which is basically like a disinfectant uh, that's food safe that you use in brewing. And so I'm just going to spray the lid of this, the inside of the lid. We'll screw this on. I'm just going to fill the airlock up with some of that star sand. So as you can see, you have, you have water like at the half levels here. And so as the gas goes out, it kind of acts like a like a trap in your toilet <laughs> basically it doesn't allow gas gas in so we'll put this into the liquid but not after we spray this little bottom part because that's going in all right there you have it uh what we're going to do next this is done we're going to put it in like a dark closet somewhere uh just let it do its thing for like i said at least a month uh I'm going to label it. I'm going to put a little piece of tape on here with the label of what it is, the date that I did it. That way you know. And uh, we'll see you guys in about a month when we make this thing into an actual hot sauce. So I can't wait. We'll see you guys then. Here we go. It's been six weeks since we first started fermenting this. Uh, let's crack this thing open. Check it out. Oh, the smells on that. Oh, you get that just fermented peppers just have that great hot sauce smell straight off the brine and everything like that so what we're gonna do we're gonna strain this brine off really quick <laughs> hopefully not make a mess get our weights out And there you have it. And I only managed to get like a cup on the floor. Not too bad. So get this cleaned up really quick. Okay, so a couple things with making this sauce. Uh, we wanna make sure that this is, I mean, this is a big batch, so it's gonna be probably sitting around for a while. You wanna make sure that it's self, uh, shelf stable so that it doesn't explode on you. Uh, there's gonna be, well, shelf stable is referring to like the organisms that are gonna be bad to you. We're also gonna pasteurize this in the uh, Vitamix here, get it up to 165, kill off all the yeast or anything bacteria that's in there as well, just to uh, prevent it from still fermenting and exploding. So to make sure that it's shelf stable, we have a pH meter here. And uh, anything under 4.6 is what we're looking for. And obviously the lower the better. This is at 3.5, so we should be good to go. Okay, so now for the fun part. We're gonna get all of these peppers and beets and onion, get this all into the blender. Hopefully it'll all fit. No beet left behind. All right, we're gonna start off just doing a cup of the brine at a time. Okay, so what we're doing by adding this cup of brine in at a time is that we're basically going for the consistency that we want. I personally like my hot sauces a little on the thinner side, more like Tabasco. Uh, so we'll kind of measure it out as, as we're going and kind of get a feel for it. We're also going to be adding some uh, xanthan gum in there, which is going to help thicken it up a little bit, keep it from separating. And uh, so let's get to it. Still super chunky and thick. I think we need another cup of this brine. Uh, one of the cool things about the Vitamix here is that it, you don't have to strain out any of the seeds. If you're using like a normal blender, you might have to push it through a screen or something like that just to get all the seeds and, and everything else up. This is gonna blend it all the way down. So 
get a little bit more uh, end result, a little more product out of it. All right, so cup number two. All right, cup number three. Still just a little thicker than what I want, so get back to it. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I believe the starches that are in the beets, uh, maybe just the texture of the beets, I'm not sure, are keeping this a little bit thicker than what I really wanted, uh, but I'm sure it'll still be fine. Uh, we're gonna add a third cup of red wine vinegar is going in. And this is where that xanthan gum is going in. We're gonna do about a teaspoon and a half of xanthan gum. And like I said, that's just going to help it keep from separating. All right. and with this stuff, you kind of want to move quick. Once it goes in, you want to start blending right away. So we got about a tea teaspoon and about a half. All right, I think this is done. Let's give this thing a try, huh? And actually just that little bit of vinegar uh, helped thin it out a little bit more. A little bit creamier of a texture and uh, yeah, cheers. I mean, check out this color though. Look at that color, the beets. Just adding that vibrant red. That's good. Um, you get the habanero straight away. It's got a little bit of the uh, beet on the end there. I think a lot of the, the beet, the bright, beet, uh, yeah, the bright beet flavor, try and say that three times fast, um, kind of got fermented out, but you definitely get that, that earthiness from the beets in there. This stuff is absolutely incredible. Let's get it bottled. Before we bottle it, one last step that I forgot about here, uh, we need to pasteurize this, like I said, to kill the uh, yeast so that it doesn't keep fermenting, or the bacteria that's in there so that it doesn't keep fermenting. Uh, so this has a setting where we can put it on soup setting, gets up to temperature, and uh, we'll just let it do its thing. Total blend time here has been about 10 minutes. We are at 168, so we overshot it by three degrees, <laughs> not a big deal. Um, one thing I will, again, reiterate, these habaneros are hot. Don't touch your face, your eyes. I just like rub my cheek and it's burning. <laughs> So uh, this stuff is pretty hot. But uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bottle it. Uh, as with before when we started it, I just ran some star sand in this along with the caps and uh, just to help sanitize it. Okay, so to bottle these things, we've got our funnel, got our bottle here. Just picked up these bottles on Amazon, come in a pack of like 35. Um, have little shrink wrap things if you wanna put those on. So this is just gonna get poured in here. And you want to do this slow and make sure that you don't overfill the funnel because otherwise it can uh, come out over the top here. Fills up quicker than you think. Because it's hot, it will uh, condense a little bit as it cools. So you want to fill the bottle really up as, as high as you can go. And uh, so we've got a little squirt cap here that goes on. And the lid. There you have it. We are done. Habanero beet hot sauce. Can't wait to throw this thing on some eggs, maybe some tacos. Looks amazing, tastes amazing. I mean, check out that color. It's like beet red weird, beet. So uh, guys, thanks for showing up. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers, don't forget to subscribe.